Brother Dave, Brother Dave, we are back. And I am just so happy that you're here. There's so many things going on out in the world. There's so many things to, dis to discourage us. And you're here. And every time you speak, you will be speak on things that may not be too pleasant. We walk away with confidence, we're reassured, and we walk away stronger. And we have hope that we know that everything is going to be all right. And for that thing that you carry in your spirit that makes you a plus to any atmosphere, to many, any area that you go in, I thank you and I thank the creator for that because you've always been a plus to me in my life. And I'm quite sure there are countless others that can say the same exact thing. Welcome, my brother. And let's just flow. And I want to yeah. hear from you as anyone to hear from you right now and this is a joyous time for me talk to me brother what, what's going on lance let me tell you lance the the raw sentiment is mutual uh you know what you mean me uh before we get going let's get rid of this vain stuff right away so i got a sty from playing golf i was playing golf and got dirt in my eye uh and yes. it really got gotten got infected which was you know it's cool uh we we'll deal with it uh but we 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 need to show up Regardless of how we are, we don't wear, we don't do any makeup. We don't have lights and all that other stuff to to enhance our, right. our this and that. No, we're real. We're real. That's right. What it is, and, and you know, it's so funny. We're going to talk about some fighting, and it looks like I done gotten a fight. And um, you know, they got their licking, <laughs> but I didn't lose. So, so we're back. Right, right. right. <laughs> and, exactly. And we're here. But man, <laughs> but man, it's it's amazing um, to experience this moment in eternity with you in our whole lives and our journey we've been doing this lance you and i've been doing this for uh since yes. 2014 is when we 14 15 14 is when we yes. first uh, had our first conversation and that Amazing. same year we did our first show yes and, and and you know because you and i speak you know without doing shows um and right. you are my brother and it just so happened we were talking yesterday and you sparked so much in, in our conversations. And this is where we came up with, with today's show. And today's show, um, I just really want to, everybody knows that we are in a very precarious moment in history and they can feel it. So now that we're here, now let's set up for after this overall moment that we're in. Um, and let's not just always focus on where we are, because really that's what the system wants us to do. They want us to stay focused in right now instead of preparing prosperity that we're going to pass forward generations ahead. So, yes. if, you know, if you're just focusing on everything right now, it's very easy to control you by emotions. But when you have a a a projection, it, when you see further out, the further out you see, you start to be able to evaluate even more and it calms your spirit and it calms your emotions even so. So right. I really wanted to just take this opportunity to, to really just talk to everybody and give them a, you know, my overall um, opinion about where we are right now, but more important, where it is that we should be going and where it is that we could be going if we will just give energy to us. Whatever we give energy to, we give life to. And whatever we give life to shall surely live. And so once you create a form of energy, it can never be extinguished. So very important how we, how we adjudicate our powers, how we adjudicate our image of the great creator, because the great creator has created things, living entity well, can do the exact same thing. And so what is it that we're going to be creating is very important. So just wanted to that with you about yes. everything. And, uh, but I, I'm serious, bro. I, I really do appreciate uh, you. And you know what you mean? We got so much more to do. Uh, just yes. before we even get started, we're, we're definitely going to have our seminar. Uh, if the overall uh, geopolitical events uh, allow us to have our, we will have a seminar here in Dallas, Texas, 
Um, yes. That seminar will be in May the 20th to the 22nd. Um, it is my plan to bring Lance in uh, for that overall seminar. Um, and that's Good very important you, because one yes. of the things we're, we're, what we do, we have a service precious metals dealership, but what, what I actually do is I actually show people how to buy the precious metals correctly. Um, and I only do that with clients and we have a lot of clients. And so my thing is to educate them so that they can make the best decision for themselves. And really Lance, it is really about is I try to re-engage everyone to be able to claim their birthright that the great creator gave us. We have a yes. birthright to be prosperous. We have a birthright to have sovereignty. We have a birthright to create a wealthy, wealthy environment for ourselves and everything that comes in contact with us. That is the benevolent, uh, you know, that's the benevolent gift that was given to us. How we decide to use that gift or how we decide to change that is based off of our will. So I will say to you, if that's the case, and we know that's the case by the great creator, if we are in famine, if we are in in destitute, or if we are under financial subjugation, if we are yes. impoverished, is because we will for that overall spirit to have life with us. So let me put it really plainly. If we're broke, if we're broken of our birthright, is because we chose to be that way. Now, we choose to be that way is this is that the system will put traps, right? The system will actually uh, uh, encage you. The system will, will actually trick you into executing your overall will to be poor. Mm. And if you give energy to that, you're going to give life to impoverishment and you're going to be disenfranchised your birthright. I think we, it's very important that we understand if the great creator can't make us do anything, what makes us think that anybody else can make us do anything either? Yeah, sorry about that. Keep going, brother. No, no, you're good. You're good, Lynn. So if the great creator can make us do anything, so what makes us think that anyone else can make us do anything? It can't. The influence is, the influence can be there, but the overall execution of our will is the choice of the overall spiritual being. So if we are disconnected from our birthright, it's because we choose to be. We may have been schooled on how to disavow ourselves from that. Well, then guess what? We have to get into a measure of education that brings us back into that. So that's really you know, what we've always been about um, in every show that we've done um, here on this platform with Lance, and we've done countless um, here. Yes. <laughs> my thing is that it's really up to us. It's, and when I say it's up to us, it's not up to us collectively. You can't have a collective movement until you first have an individual awakening, an individual commitment in an individual constitution to who you really are. Because then once you do that, once you are able to willfully participate in that prosperity yourself, now the thing about being prosperous, you got to remember, the thing about being prosperous is this, you're not rich. Meaning you're prosperous, you're so wealthy, you need to start to give away. You need to start to give it away. Think about how important that is. The great creator gave to us. The great creator didn't take from us. The system always teach us to take and never to give because taking is a rich man's sustainable program. Giving is the wealthy's creed. That's why they're wealthy. That's why they're wealthy. So it's really important for us to 
have a refocusing and a reshuffling of our overall commitment to ourselves. And, you know, Lance and I came up with this, the name of this, and it's, it's really like we, we, we took, you know, boxing as the example, as the metaphor. You know, and it says how to master the art of losing. Every true tramp must learn. And and we have a picture of and, and Lance put up Mike Tyson. We were talking about some of the great. We just was using boxing as an example. Yes. But we both agree that to become a true champion, must you first must have to master the art of losing. And so we have to look at historically we would say that we lost our birthright. And I would agree to that because we gave it up. Now we have to master that art. What did we learn from losing our birthright? What, are, what, have, we, what have we actually experienced from losing our birthright? And because of what we've learned and what we've experienced, that should motivate us on how to channel for that to never happen again. Now you just mastered the art of losing. Because if you know what caused you to lose and you mastered what it was that caused you to lose, never you never have to go down that road again. And you can actually put in the overall necessary uh, uh, method and have the true objective to never be that again. Now you start to systemize and you get a nomenclature of things that really do work you get you actually start to create the overall designing a uh, path for that to never be breached again. And guess what? You'll never be you'll never without you'll never be rich or poor again. You will be exceedingly wealthy beyond your overall being able to give away everything for three and four generations, three and four for three and four generations for those that you have not named. You would have that abundance. And a lot of us think that that abundance is only categorized or is only able, capable of being reached by the few. See, that's the system teaching us that, is that it's only for the few. No, the great creator is wealthy enough. See, the great creator is so wealthy, can never give away, never can, everything never can be given away. But, but everything that is given away sustains life for more giving. That's the greatest collaborative effort in our example, but the system doesn't want us to know that because the system really wants us to worship the system and worship yes. the few. Mm -hmm. And basically the word worship, the etymology of the word worship means to work for. I don't know about y'all, but I don't want to work for nobody. Oh. I will work with anybody that has the overall the right energy resonates correctly and is of spiritual, you know, has a spiritual uh, character that is, you know, that is beneficial, that is non-threatening, that is sincere. So the system has always taught us to worship, to worship. And one of the things that we really have to worship is you have to first worship self, meaning this. You first have to work for yourself. When you work for yourself, now you can start to see the overall benefit of good energy that you put into things. And now you'll know the path that really does work for you. And then now you can give guidance and give energy and give support to someone else's journey. Doesn't mean that you're responsible for that person. Each birthright is just that, it's a birthright. The moment that your energy is created, you're entitled to this. And it can be, it can be relinked only by you. So the system has come up with magic and sorcery. That magic and that sorcery is to trick you to, to be a willful a participant in your own minds. And that's what we really have to learn from losing. Because when you lose your birthright, here's what happens. You become a citizen. You become a nationalistic 
part of a nationalistic agenda that's not yours. Right. And you start to get a number. You get a citizen's number, a citizen's ID, a citizen's mission, a citizen's license, a citizen's options. And all of those things, all of those citizen, citizens, all, everything that comes with citizenship means this, is that you, your overall, your fruits of labor has to be divided has to be divided for someone else that doesn't work for you. So you have to give up the fruits of your labor to someone else. When you give up your fruits of your labor, what happens is this. You become rich, which means you're one economic mistake away from going broke because you won't have the sustaining provisions to get you through. And it's so important that we catch this. You should be working for prosperity because at some point and at some time, you're not going to be able to physically do what you were able to do before. If you play football and you ran a 40, a 4-4, at some point in some time, that overall timing is going to go to 4-7, 4-8, That's right. If you... If you were a basketball player and you were able to, to dunk from the three throw line, well, guess what's going to happen? You're going to get closer to the rim and then uh, to, to, for, it, for you to be able to do the same thing. And then you're going to get so close to, you're going to get to the point where you can't even do it anymore because that's the true organic nature of a spirit of, 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 a, of a spirit living inside a limited limitation of a body, being housed by a limit, the limitations of the body. Does it mean that that spirit is, is actually diminishing? It's the physical capabilities of that body that's hosting that spirit becomes limited. That's right. You, you know, Nance, you remember that I, I, I just saw something. You remember Bruce Lee? Of course. <laughs> and you know what made Bruce the master of the body was that he always fed the spirit first and primarily and the body can only can, can only display the over spiritual control that bruce had that's right the spiritual control that bruce that's what made him to everyone that was of that era everyone that knows about bruce lee that's what made him the master it wasn't the body that displayed his mastery, right? It wasn't that. What made Bruce the master is how he fought and what he did with, the, with his will. His one-inch punch was uh. all willful. It was all willful. It was all willful. Every step he took was a, a part of the overall spiritual dance that he was engaging in. And when you start to when you start to focus more on spiritualness, then what happens, everything around you changes. Do we struggle with it? Yes. Man, look at how much we get taught to be in our in our bodies and in a in a thought process that doesn't bring about our magnified greatness brings about our diminished our diminished ego of wants and so it really limits what we can do and, and we've learned to master we've learned to master our own minds and we can look at that in our community in our tribe among our tribe the only reason why we're broke in this country or for those the the the, the poverty level um, is being higher within our tribe is for one reason, one reason only. We allow the traps to capture us. We obey the rules that were set forth against us. And if you obey those rules, you give energies to those energy to those rules, and those rules are gonna move. Those rules are gonna to rule. They're gonna live. 
and they're going to have meaning with us. So we check those rules. And what's the first thing that we say? Can I do this? If I'm able to do this, I don't know. I hope I can. And so what happens the way, when you do that, you suppress and you other your sovereignty. Your sovereignty. You know what's so, so crazy about, about babies? They're sovereign to a, uh, to a very certain point. They're sovereign as far as this. If there's something that they want, they don't consider the overall environment around them. They just go get what they want until they learn that somebody else has to provide for them. But most children, as they start to grow up, coming out of, you know, being a baby and a toddler, is they what? They're self-starters. They want to do everything. We got to slow them down because when we slow them down, what are we slowing them down to? We're slowing them down to this. We, we say to that child, that baby, no, here's the rules so you don't get hurt. Well, guess what? In the ecosystem, getting hurt sometimes is necessary for a long-standing process, right? right. Mm -hmm. Now you learn what to eat, what not to eat. You learn the overall ecosystem and how it works, right? But here, what this system is really set up, it tries to keep us from getting hurt so that we will always show up for work. It doesn't want us to, to, to experience even the pains and, and the trials and, and of, of growing up sovereign because the thing about it, if you make it through the, the stages of it, you become more sovereign and you execute sovereignty better. In this system, when you stay uh, uh, without harm or without injury, that means that you're more, pro you're, you're more productive for their workforce. This is why in this country we have health care. They don't have health cures because if you're cured of a disease or something, you never go back. But if they just take care of that, right, just to get you well enough to go back to work, that will always keep you what? Infirmed. That's right. So there's nothing sincere about this system. We don't need health care. We need health cures. See, the ecosystem teaches and gives you a cure, whatever your ailment is, so you don't have that problem again. It's so funny that, that dogs, you know, the domesticated dogs are really the only ones that get cancer. Why is wow. it the ones in the wild don't get cancer? Have we really thought about that? And we always talk about how, you know, we live so much better and we live so much longer through, you know, as we have civilization and, and, and we're, we're civilized. Do you know what our ecosystem lifespan would be? It probably could be hundreds and hundreds of years. Yes. Hundreds of years not health care because one thing about this is that they're caring for your health that best benefits them not you because then what happens is that as you get older you're not able to work them as much and so what do they want you to do they want you all away now it's time for you to pass away now it's time for you to pass away you know, I, I'm not very familiar. I could be, but ancestrally, there wasn't, I don't believe that there was much emphasis on, on passing away. And I don't think even if it was used that way, it, it, it didn't have the same meaning that we have with pass away. From everything that I learned, ancestrally, the great transformation. You're transforming from one into a, into a living entity that is 
that is bound, that is uh, hosted inside of a body to now that you no longer carry that body in your overall spiritual energetic journey. It's a transformation. And that's very important because the pass away is how they keep everybody from living now. You know, they, they say that you, you want to live. That's a lie. You know, your, your actual beginning or your the first time that you're you're given life is only once. And once you're given life, it can never be extinguished. But see what they emphasize is they emphasize in the overall limitations of the body. They try to hold that energy because during that time while you're in that body, you're you're more susceptible to sorcery. Because you have a body that's not eternal. And so, yes. so we get hit with we get hit with all of this sorcery that is low frequency, and we start to resonate in the low frequency. And that's how diseases are able to manifest itself in low frequencies. You know, the higher the frequency. The higher frequency, high frequency breaks anything that's low frequency. It shatters it. You remember Ella Fitzgerald? Of course. Well, breaking you remember, breaking that glass. You, you, remember, <laughs> you remember the Memorex, right? Yes. So how do we break the glass? And here's the thing. She wasn't even physically there. It was through an instrument. So she could have gave that high frequency from a distance away. But what happened was that they were able to amplify that high frequency until it did what? Shatter the glass. Well, really, that's what we need to do. That's really what's ailing us. We, we put too much emphasis on our physical journey instead of our spiritual eternity. And so when you do that, in order for you to do that, guess what you have to do? Our physical bodies have a lower frequency. It doesn't weigh as high as our spirit. So right away, we are going, we are putting ourselves into where our spirit is being captured by our body and guess what the spirit will be held captive if our will is for that spirit not to resonate and this is how we could walk around and treat people any old kind of way and we we develop just like the great satan an eye problem i want this i i i i i yes, yes. low frequency low frequency Never talk about the power of, of taking that, that M and turning it upside down from a me to we. That's a spiritual change. It's a spiritual change. Turn that M upside down. Now it's a we. So, and I really think that we need to give more more will, more commitment to our spiritual nature and that will solve everything. I will tell you, when you do that, you will no longer care about what's happening in the Kremlin, what's happening in parliament, what ha what's happening in the White House. You just care about what's happening in your house because you remove yourself from that overall system and if we remove ourselves from that system, we'll find something. We'll have less wars, less famine, less poverty, less disease, less illness, physical and mental. Mm -hmm. And above all, we'll have more agape. We'll have more agape. Because as a citizen, you have allegiance to an inanimate 
person that is controlled by greedy people. And that's how they're able to harm your life. So they have your life. And if someone has, if you live for someone else, they have two lives and you have none. And so think wow. about, think about how much emphasis we care about what the government tells us. That's because we worship what the governmental rules are. See, they can only give you the letter of the law. But here's the thing. By us living that, we always violate the spirit of the law. And the spirit of the law is very, very simple. If you subjugate your will for someone else's agenda or you're a sellout that way, then you should be a slave because they're going to get your energy. And the thing about it is this. If they trick you to that, they've so hypnotized you into the overall walking dead and everything. The walking dead is nothing more than a slave. Someone that's subject, subject, subject. Yes, and it is a disease. And you start to, you, you, your body becomes deformed and, and you, you look as, as if you're, you're, the, you're death walk over. That's what you are. That's who we are. That's what we get taught in school to become. This is why a lot of high frequency children hate schools. Because they know what's really going on there. Yes. But what we do is we beat them into submission. That's one of the things that this overall system, there's always a beating into submission. Think about it. That is so Think true. About it. You know why in, a, in our community, there's certain things that we put up with our children. Else we'll tap that butt, right? Oh, yes. But we don't. We don't realize where that beating mentality came from. That beating mentality was that you were going to beat someone into submission, to being submissive and, and to submit to your rules. Where do you think we brought that into our homes and be part of our culture with? You know, we even think about it because I'll tell you something. My mom, my mom, mm -hmm. she, <laughs> when, Man, she would, she, she would, boy, I will beat your ass, right? <laughs> yes. Right? But think about that. Where did that overall methodology, where was that seeded at? Where did it come from? I remember the first time I was going to give my daughter a spanking. And, I, and deep down, I said, what is wrong? What? I said, and couldn't do it. And she just looked at me. And all I could do was laugh. And that's not, that's not spiritually healthy. Now, if you violate spiritual rules, are there some ramifications for it? Yes, but it is not the overall the overall penalty generally doesn't come from the person unless you're threatening them. Right? Unless you're threatening them. Mm -hmm. Case in point, you pay this. If you don't pay this, then this man or woman is going to beat you until you pay. That's the letter of law. That ain't the spirit. It's not the spirit. Right? So where did we learn? Where did this frequency come from? And in this, in this frequency coming, where has it, where has it embedded in, in uh, been embedded in us for us to be submissive? to a government, as a citizen. This is why the system in our tribe, it gave the overall appearance that freedom came from citizenship. Here's the thing about a lie. 
is that when you test it, it tells the truth. You always got to test the lie. And that tested lie will always tell you what's really the truth or what the agenda is. So now, yes. Think about it. If citizenship was really the key to freedom, and I will tell you something, I never want to be free. Never be free. Free is, is something that is the letter of the law. Freedom is only something that man can give you. What I always fight for is sovereignty, self-determination, because that is what the great creator gives you, liberty. It's a big difference. Freedom and liberty is a big difference. Huge difference. So we, we really have to look at where does Where does this really come from? It Brother Dave, from, before, before, yeah. you, before you move forward, it, it seems as though there's several who are hear, hearing it scrambled in a way. We're hearing you, but it's, the system's compromised. I just want to ask the chat room, do you hear it a lot? Can you understand what he's saying? Or is it mild? Because if it is really great, because I hear it here, but I was thinking it's my internet. Hold your thought. Um, if it's really something that's making a lot of difficulty to hear his flow, what I'll do, I'll have you call in. But hold tight, Dave. Okay. I just want to get a word from the chat room so this initial uh, transmission can be heard all the way because it was a little bit, but it got a little more intense. So if it's something that's stopping you from hearing everything, we know the internet is not perfect. Okay, Empress LG said she hears them. Okay, let, let's get feedback from people from all over. Let's see all over different locations if they can. Because I can hear you, but it got worse on my end. But I know sometimes, okay, they can hear. Oh, y'all, thank you. Um, let's get two more with the feedback. Because I'm, I'm hearing it like scrambled, but I can make what you're saying. So it's no problem for me. I'm used to this. Um, but, but go ahead and carry on. But if it gets but, worse. You know what, with Lance, you want me, here? you want me to call, call in instead? E let me get some more feedback because it would definitely come through clear or clearer if you just call on the phone. Um, okay. You let me know. Can hear. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just call on the phone and okay. um, we'll continue there. Let's see if that makes anything better. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to we'll get out, I'm going to get out okay. of here and I'll come just, back. Just I'll call me right. Okay. Exactly. I'm here. Okay. All right. Let's just uh, wait for Brother Dave to call back and um, give a little music. Give me a minute for him to call back. We'll, we'll try it this way, Brother Dave. I'm, I meant to call him the actual phone, but let's see if this um, connection back into the stream um, will make a difference. Okay. You can come on back in, Brother Dave. Okay, cool. Can you, you hear can me? Come on back in. Yeah, yeah, I want to make sure. It still sounds a little compromised uh, to me. Um, because you know, you know what it could be is that there uh, in this in this building in our building here, uh, there is a a rather large um, radio uh, network, and they have a huge antenna here. Uh, okay. So, okay. Well, we can hear you. And people didn't have any complaints, but it, it got a little worse on my end, and I just wanted to make sure that nobody else um, had the same issue. But I, I can hear you because I know how to listen. Oh, uh, with the signal. So it, it'll go as long as the end result is good, because it didn't sound as bad when I went on my phone and listened to it the way it's sounding directly. So okay. let's not even lose the flow. If everybody's OK with it. Um, yeah, it's a little chop sometime. Um, try, try calling in on the phone, brother. You can still maintain the signal here and mute yourself here. But just pick up the actual phone since we have the banner up and call me on the actual phone on WhatsApp. And, and let's see okay. if that sounds a lot better. It may not be so, chopped. Okay, you know I mean? so call you okay. call you through WhatsApp. Okay, all right. Yeah, yeah. but stay okay. here, you know, and just mute yourself and just call Got me it. on the phone. If, if if okay, so we'll do that. And we're gonna give Brother Dave a second to call back on the phone. Sorry about that, but I just didn't want to lose any bit of what he's saying because he's he's building up a crescendo to something very powerful. 
And um, that's Brother Dave calling. Okay, Dave, let's um, let me let me patch you in to the actual phone. Let's see if that takes away some of this foolishness that's going on. Brother Dave, talk to me. Let me hear you. Okay, now, now WhatsApp is reconnecting. <laughs> and it hung up. You, you can't win for losing. But I tell you, if I was out here wearing a dress and um, talking about all types of um, lifestyles and choices that, you know, if I was out here talking about what I did over the weekend in a decadent way, trust me, they would put that to the forefront and just make it something, um, you know, okay, he's going to call back. Even the WhatsApp, when, when he called, it, was, it started to reconnect. You know, let's see if this is a lot better, and um, we'll move forward with it. But like I said, on, on this side of the street, that's just the way it is. We're used to that. It's a way of life because we don't get down with certain things, and we don't support certain things, and we don't go with what they think we should go through. Okay, let's see if this works. Okay, Brother Dave, talk to me, brother. Hey, Lance. Yes, yes. Can you hear me? Loud and clear. And if it's um, if you're on a speakerphone, don't be on a speakerphone. But other than that, you're good. And um, give give me okay. the give me give me the feedback in the room as Brother Dave talks. And so let's roll this way and let's see how it goes. Okay, but you can hear me uh, pretty good, correct? Yes, yes, I can hear you. Excellent. Now it's okay. much better. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah. So what I what I was basically talking about if if the citizenship. You know, because we went through so many different errors with our tribe, and it was really the sorcery and the trick. And, and the, the actual objective of the sorcery and the magic is to get us to be willful participants in our surrendering of our prosperity, of our birthright. And if you give that to someone else, you make them exceedingly wealthy. You make them you make them wealthy and you put you give away what was offered to you. And then what happens is that that overall void that you have in yourself, in your community, in your family, in your surroundings, it is a void that is necessary to sustain you. So now you become the walking dead. Give you an example. Mm -hmm. If freedom was really, there was a trick that freedom needed to be gained and granted from the government so that you would have the overall same equitable uh, standing as another person, a white person, a, 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 a Jewish person, or this person to that person. But see, that was a lie in itself because even when you were given the so-called benefits of citizenship, what did that change in our overall standing of having wealth? Were you any less disenfranchised? Some people would say, yes, we have more money than we ever had before. And I would say to that person is that that's because you don't know what money is. You got more pieces of paper. You got more monopoly pieces of paper. You got more coupons than what your overall grandparents and great grandparents had. But even those coupons that you have now don't buy the same assets that theirs did. You don't have any money because the only thing that you have is what they gave you, what they've patented. So currency is what another man can put a patent on. Money. It's something that the great creator gave us to, desist, to sustain life. Air is a form of money. Water is a form of money. And, and it's so crazy. Now we've become so accustomed to being the walking dead because we haven't mastered the art of losing. We don't take all of this as a loss. What we do is we look at it as how do I ease this to get a little more freedom? And if we continue to try to, to tread and walk through the, 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 the overall path of freedom, we're going to continue to walk away from our birthright further and further away. Further and further away. If that was the case, Lance, 
Yes. What did marching get us? Nothing. What did speech get us? Nothing. What did what did voting get us? Nothing. What did paying our taxes get us? Absolutely nothing. What did what did the overall promise of our equitable standing? What was what was done with that? We see that it's a lie. You never could be equitable when you give away something and someone is tricking you to, to do that That's because right. your table, the table is unevenly yoked. They're winning and you're losing. So what's the only thing that could retrify that? What's the only thing that you could can fix that? You have to stop worshiping. I'm going to tell you all something that Vladimir Putin said. I, I sent it to you. Yes. Uh, Lance. Yes. Vladimir Putin said this, that Africans, talking about black people as well here in the States, Africans think that white people are a semi-god. And with that mentality, they come to negotiation already thinking that they're speaking to a semi-god. And you know what he means by that? He means that we come as, as a valuable entity that's defeated and we consider someone else's value over ours that's the perfect citizen that's a slave that's right you're absolutely right but you know what brother dave i have to say for him as a white man to admit that because it was more that he said to that but basically that was it and if you listen to the whole thing or read the whole thing, I've never heard any other person, any other white man say something like this and kick it like it is. But I didn't hear any uproar when he said that. But if Farrakhan said it, they go against them. I didn't hear yeah. any, I didn't hear any coons come against them with that because it's true. So many sit down at the negotiating table like they're negotiating with a semi-god. He got it right, and I'm going to say that publicly. I may not agree with him on all these other things or some things, whatever have you, but he told it like it was. And that's what many Caucasians know about us. And that's why they deal with us the way they deal with us. But I'm glad he said it. I want to hear what other people have to say as far as those coons out there who say who, who speak against those who speak speak the truth. But go ahead, brother. I'm sorry. But that's what the walking dead always do. They, they, they're always going to speak the agenda that has infirmed them. They always think that the poison is candy. They're always going to think that. And they're always going to pass you. Do you want some candy? Because I've taken it. You should take it too. <laughs> that's right. And so, not going to. It's not. That's not going to change. So, what we really need to do is learn from. We need to learn, master the art of losing. We've lost so much, but if we learn from what caused us truly to lose that, and I will tell you, it doesn't matter how much you own you're still losing because the great creator didn't give you ownership over anything, but gave you control over your will. It's not ownership that we need is control. And the first measure of control that would be meaningful in establishing prosperity is we have to control our will. And be unapologetic in controlling that will. Sovereignty, because I will tell you, this country and other countries will want you to be soldiers and a soldier can never do what a warrior thinks because a warrior upholds sovereignty. A soldier takes orders. They tell you where to go, what to do, when to eat, when to drink, who to fight, what to die for. And who to kill for that. A warrior responds to this. Where is the sovereignty most beneficial? Shows that's where we will go. What is threatening the sovereignty, we will remove. Plain and simple. 
plain and simple. Truth. So right now, you see everything that's going on in the world is all set up to, to more and more people are starting to become aware that the system is inimical to their benefit. It's not in their best interest to be a part of this. So the system recognizes it's through its overall matrix and identify, we tell on ourselves so much, right? When we play by their rules, they will rule. So now when these things reach, then they have to have wars that bring about great fear and destruction so that they can whoop that ass for you to get back in line. Yes. So I can beat your ass back into line. And we get brought up on that from the very beginning, from the people we love the most, our grandparents and our parents. My overall, my grandmother said, I never have to strike you with a fist to show love. I'm going to strike you with sincerity so that you will feel love. Wow. Grandmother never would, never would raise her hand. But everybody else in the family was the other way. So I had an embattlement. And you know who I always wanted to be around? My grandmother. That's right. Who was I really avoiding? Everybody else. And I will tell you because I said, them folks is crazy because they were. It's crazy. So this system right now, it realizes that it's losing its grip on people. So it's going to come with all kind of means and manners and objectives, methods to achieve their objective to get everybody else in line. What's the best way to do it? Have pain and misery all around so that everyone will look to their overall governments to solve the very problems that they created to control you. Absolutely. How do you break it? Real easy how you break it. You got to stop worshiping. You got to stop worshiping. Meaning you got to stop working for. The only person you should be worshiping is yourself in your family, in your tribe. Let me put it this way. You work for yourself. And then that work benefits the family who then will work for them, themselves. And then their work will benefit them and then they start to work for the tribe. It continues. It's a sincere process. Now you have a collective prudence that you start to build so much wealth that you will never be able to give away all that you've gained. And the universe has so much to give us. So much. So we're right now, we're going to see some very trying beatings. And they're going to, to they, they've uh, developed so many addictions in this society, in this overall civil play. And they're going to start to play on those addictions. We're, we're narcissistically addicted to ourselves. Yes, indeed. So they're going to play on that. They're, we're, we're addicted to status. We're addicted to classes. We're addicted to demographics. So they're going to play on that big time. And we're going to naturally, because we've been schooled that, that in, you always get in line. You stand right behind the next person, wherever that person, wherever that teacher leads that overall group, the teacher leads the overall students to slaughter by a line. Get them in line, get them in line. So we're going to see finances be attacked because this, this overall war is a financial war. It's a war against the common people, you and I. These people aren't losing any wealth. They're trying to gain more because they compete with each other. 
because they're fighting against other sovereign, malevolent people. So where do we start? Number one, you start with you. Stop worshiping everything. And you can, you can fill that in for yourself. Start developing relationships with everything that lives. First, you got to find out what is a living entity and what's not. Because we are basically that elementarily suppressed. We don't even know. We don't even know. So I would say we are in the, the winds of war. And the winds of war are always destructive. And they're going to bomb. They're going to cyber attack. Man, Lance, you know how they're going to kill a lot of people? Mm -hmm. how, they, how they're going. And there is a, a thing of killing. Where, when, when you take, when someone surrenders their, their spirit to you through sorcery, that's a killing. That's a, an assassination, a murder. Man, wait until they turn off social media. Exactly. exactly. Wait until they turn off social media. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> and what I mean by turn off social media media is this way. It may not be what everybody thinks. They're going to turn off social, social media because it ain't going to be so social. That overall platform is going to teach you how to be your neighbor's worst enemy. Hmm. and it's all going to be on social media this is how you get over on the next person and that platform is going to be shared and it's, 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 it's happening now it's happening now it's it's, it, it's, it's such a, a effective tool because it's based off, the, off of the ego it's based off of the ego so the thing that everyone should be, in my opinion, what, what has helped me, and I need to grow in this even further, much further, is that I realized that my sovereignty is safer for my neighbor. My sovereignty is safer for my family. My sovereignty is safer for my friends. My sovereignty is safer for me. Because when you start to change your energy, then the other tricks and the overall sorcery has no hold on you because you don't open the door for it to come in to live. That's right. We got to close that overall spiritual door. That overall sorcery and that magic and that overall, uh, um, you know, demonic energy. If we don't pick it up, it has to go somewhere else. It has to go somewhere else. And I tell you, bro, the sorcery and the destruction that is going to become is going to make so many people mentally, emotionally, and physically crippled. That their and fear is going to be so is, is going to be so strong that they're going to be paralyzed. They're going to just say, make it easy for me. Tell me what to do. Mm -hmm. I mean, think about that. How many times in, in, in our lives do we say, do, do we get taught to say, all right, just tell me what to do. We even say at our first job, we say, they, we say this, tell me what to do. We, we don't know the power of the word of our words. Uh -huh. Right. You don't know the power of our words. And then the government is always, we'll tell you what to do. We'll tell you what to do. And we always ask, what is the government doing about this? We're, so we're actually giving our power away. So you have a problem and, you, and you're, you're asking someone else to fix it for you. Right? If, you, if you're a mechanic and you know how to fix a... A, a carburetor or, or, or let's say the computer goes out and you know how to fix it on a car or you know how to fix the transmission and you have all the parts, all the tools that you need to fix the transmission, you know, you already know what the problem is. Do you go to someone else and say, tell me what to do? No. Mm -hmm. 
But, you know, in our lives, we're really the mechanics that have already diagnosed the real problem and can fix it. But we've been taught to walk away from our spiritual diag diagnostics and go over to the physical realm and ask the controllers, the ones that we're worshiping, what do you want me to do? And what do you think that they're going to tell you? Exactly what they want you to do for their prosperity. And we buy it. And we buy it. Hook, line, and sink. Man, mm -hmm. it, when has a citizen, when has the citizenship ever really been beneficial to, to people? People say, well, and then what they'll do is they're going to start naming programs. But you can't name programs without naming them all. You can't name one or two programs without taking it all in totality. So if there was a program to, to, for small businesses to do better, right? Well, you can't just use that as an example because I'm going to tell you another program that they have is called the draft. And they're going to send your son and your daughter off to war and die. They How is that beneficial? That's right. You can't half-ass it. You can't be, you, you can't be halfway in. You got to look at the whole thing. Because if you look at the whole thing, then you see the real agenda because they'll trick you with the small stuff. So Lance, you know, I just wanted to real quick yes. because we, we are, everything here globally is about to be the fear, the fear meter and the attacks are going to be ex extreme. The key that we should be is I'm not on any side. I'm not on a governmental side because the governmental side is, is the creators of the problem at hand. The side that I'm on is I'm on the sovereign side of people, the living entity. And I think that this next historical set of events that's going to unfold globally is going to be a great time for people to realize that we have to stop doing what has been killing us for so long. We did the show a long time before, a leaderless movement. Remember yes. that one? Oh, yes. Brilliant show. We did the leaderless movement. Well, guess what, folks? We're here now. And everyone listening, you're going to be challenged with this and you're going to pass. You don't need a leader. A leader is what is used to train a living being to be domesticated into submission. That's why you, a dog has a leash that's attached. The, the, the leader holds the leash that has the lead around the overall dog's neck. Don't need leaders. It's a leaderless movement. You need to, we need a sovereign movement. In a sovereign movement, you're never poor. You're never famine. You have health cures. You may get sick, but you'll get cured of what it is. And then what happens when you get cured of something? Your own genetic body's DNA coding starts to, to develop the overall codes for you to what? Have immunity from that overall disease again. It's something about these diseases that we have now that are chemically induced and the body doesn't have a natural immunity against a chemical because it's a poison. It goes in retrograde. Mm. So there are a lot of major events that's going to be happening. We'll talk more about those, but I really want us to focus on, in my opinion, we got to focus on how to really master the art of losing. What have we learned in our losing so we never do that again? I will tell y'all, I don't vote because <laughs> if voting mattered, it, the shit would be illegal. If voting really mattered, it would be illegal. That's a t-shirt, man. <laughs> it would be illegal. 
So I don't vote. I don't waste my energy. I don't give my overall frequency to voting for another leader. My overall energy is used for sovereignty. When you become more sovereign, then your overall conversation and your agenda with the people around you can be different. Because now you start to control your energy and control is the key to prosperity. You got to control assets to be wealthy. Wealth isn't determined by how much cash you hold, but how many resources you control. Truth. That's really where it's at. We, um, Lance, I think yes. that, and, and I can't tell everybody how to do it. The thought, you know, someone has to spark the overall, have you thought about this? Have you thought about mastering the losses and how and why we lost? Have we mastered the art of losing in order to be a champ again? In order to be a champ again. So I would say, let that speak to you. Start to move in it. And I will tell you, it will be so beneficial to you now, guess what? If someone tells you to hate someone or tells you to kill someone, that doesn't move you anymore. You don't buy the propaganda. But I'll tell you this, when you're sovereign, you definitely protect yourself. You don't let those demons punk you. A warrior is a warrior because they're built for the confrontation. <laughs> yes. Built for the confrontation. So... But Lance, I just wanted to real quickly yes. chime in. I'm going to do a, a, a real show with what's going on current event wise and preparing um, uh, probably next week um, okay. if you're going to be available. I'm available uh, 24-7 for you, brother. 24-7. You don't even have to mm. just call it and it's done. Just give me a chance to prepare the link. Boom. Like today and we're doing it. And, and this one has to be short because it's in the middle of, of my obligations. Yes, yes. Uh, so I'm going to have to get to that. But we're, we're going to have our and then everyone that emailed us and you can email us directly at info at Prosperity Mint. You're more than welcome as clients to come to our seminar um, in in May. And I will tell you, it'll be quite beneficial because of the opportunities that you won't even have to pay for will bring a measure of wealth to you and your family that, that is, is not really given to people, but we're going to give away these things. That's right. And um, Lance is, I got to speak to you, Lance, uh, sidebar sure. um, on that, uh, on this product that we have that um, our overall, you know, our tribe can gain a uh, residual income that they can then turn into assets. And now they're wealthy. That's right. uh, definitely going to do that. So I just want us to really, we have to master the art of losing to become a real champ. We have to. Because now when you master that, now you know how the losses will come towards you and you can sidestep them. And you can sidestep them. And that's as much easier to sidestep something than it is to fight it. There you go takes less energy. We got to be like Bruce Lee, right? You're already won in the movement by being fluently away from trouble. So, Lance, I love you, my brother. I love you too. Uh, we Thank will you. definitely catch up. Yes. And the next one that we'll do, we'll, I'm going to give you some of the stuff that I see that's happening globally, what it means and what you should be doing to prepare against it because it, it, the gloves are about to come off. And I just saw some things where Russia is now sanctioning uh, U.S. personnel um, here, people here, Joe Biden, uh, the Secretary of Defense, Hillary Clinton, all these other was good for the goose is good for the gander. It's a setup, y'all. Let's be ready for this. And so that we will be able to sidetrack trouble because it is really coming. So Lance, anything by, by you, bro, that, that you wanted to before we get out of here? Well, you spoke nothing but the truth, brother. It resonates with me. I'm glad you are sharing these perspectives and insights. 
You are a very special individual for us because you download truth like a lightning rod attracts lightning. And when you speak, hey, there's nothing more I can add on to this because it's all truth. I just want everybody to digest this. And if you can, share it, discuss it. And we have all types of shows. I just want to say also, too, that I'm, I'm taking um, voicemails through WhatsApp for those who have stories to share, whether it be whistleblowing on a job or some type of abuse somewhere, whatever it may be, it's definitely going to be something that we involve the people more and bring it down to grassroots. And it's more content than I could even put out there by a show. So send me. I'm going to drop the link in here shortly. And um, Brother Dave, thank you so much. Oh, as always, you're phenomenal. And um, we have a work to do. And you're doing what you do excellently. And the universe will always favor you because of that. Lance, that's because we are the universe. <laughs> we are the universe. We, yes. we really... We, we really are the universe we're, we're the energy we're one of some of the energy sources that the universe lives you know has collective prudence to, to sustain life with and that's what we do let's do it in a better more efficient effective fluent way so we can sidetrack trouble that's right so much love much respect lance and Always. everyone else um but the next one is going to be a, a heavy 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 that's going to be a lot yes uh so because we'll, we'll point out stuff and to, to get ready so Yes. Uh, watch what's going on in the world, but don't be of it. That's right. Watch what's happening, but don't be of it. Be above it. So much love, Lance. Much love. I'll talk to you in a little bit. Thank you so okay. much, brother. Peace. Okay, peace. Peace. I take pack to the lung, kill the stress to the heat. I'm trying to do more for the soul, way less for the bread. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, I take pack to the lung, kill the stress to the heat. I see the things that they do way less than they say. Cause it's a war on the real, baby, look outside. Uh, a war on the real, baby, look out. Cause it's a war on the real, baby, look outside. Uh, a war on the real, baby, look out. Cause it's a war on the real, baby, look outside. Uh, a war on the real, baby, look out. Cause it's a war on the real, baby, look outside. Uh, a war on the real, baby, look out. Can't be a real Right, get you canceled. The whole system need to dismantle. Coppers treated like the utmost wanted. Trying to rule the block, but don't know what goes on me. News got a story with a new take on me. Carrying out the window with the screw face on me. But I know that God love me when my burn. 95 degrees and I can't get sunburned. Wonder when your government will make me legal. Burn the whole city if I can't be equal. Get off my d please, Brad, I earn that. 400 years, how you still ain't learn? I take pack to the lung, kill the stress to the heat. I'm trying to do more for the soul, way less for the bread. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, I take pack to the lung, kill the stress to the heat. I see the things that they do way less than they say. Because it's a war on the real, baby, look outside. Uh, a war on the real, baby, look out. Cause it's a war on the real, baby, look outside uh, A war on the real, baby, look out Cause it's a war on the real, baby, look outside uh, A war on the real, baby, look out Cause it's a war on the real, baby, look outside uh, A war on the real, baby, look out Shout out to the trying to gentrify the genre Tell them free my middle finger to your honor In the days coming down the seconds on the time Goofy still trying to purchase that designer About to buy it, learn to grow my own food cause I don't like the look they get me in the whole foods and when you stay ready you ain't gotta get ready 
But it ain't on me now, I'm living cause my heavy. But ain't sweet, think we thin. My whole attitude on MC Ren. It's my neighborhood now, Bob, I bought that. 400 years, how you still ain't caught that? I take pack to the lung, kill the stress to the heat. I'm trying to do more for the soul, way less for the bread. Yes, sir. Uh, I take pack to the lung, kill the stress to the head. I see the things that they do way less than they say. Cause it's a war on the real, baby, look outside. Uh, a war on the real, baby, look out. Cause it's a war on the real, baby, look outside. Uh, a war on the real, baby, look out. Cause it's a war on the real, baby, look outside. Uh, a war on the real, baby, look out. Cause it's a war on the real, baby, look outside. Uh, a war on the real, baby, look out. <laughs> Why are we called Negroes? Why are we deaf, dumb, and blind? Why is everybody making progress, yet we seem to be lagging so far behind? Why are we mistreated? Why are we in this condition, stripped of our name, our language, our culture, our God, and our religion? Here in America, all of our religious training has been gotten by the preacher. He has told us of a heaven way up in the sky that we can't enjoy now, but rather after we die. But all of the years that we're living, for us there's nothing but hell, pain, torture, and misgiving. Yet the Bible speaks of a heaven filled with material luxury, which the white man and the preacher has right here, so we see. So my friend, take it for what it's worth. Your heaven and your hell is right here on this earth. So let's check back into history, which rewards all research and tells us plainly that before the white man gained entry to the east, he was living in the caves of Europe, a ravenous beast, eating juniper roots and eating flesh raw, till God sent Moses to civilize him and teach him the law. Then following Marco Polo, an explorer, he gained entry into Asia and Africa. From China, he took silk and gunpowder. From India, he took jute, manganese, and rubber. He raped Africa of her diamonds and her gold. From the Mideast, he took barrels of oil untold. Raping, robbing, and murdering everything in his path. The whole black world has tasted of the white man's wrath. So my friend, it's not hard to tell. A white man's heaven is a black man's hell. Before we came to Earth, we were living in the east by the Nile River. We were living in luxury, enjoying freedom, justice, and equality. We wore silk and rose, slippers of gold. We were the wealthiest and the wisest people, I'm told. Now we are the poorest of the poor. Nobody wants us at their door. So, my friend, it's easy to tell. Quite Black man hell. <laughs>
When the white man came to America, he told the Indian, I am your white brother. He said, Red man, I'll treat you the best. Yet and still he pushed the Indian further west with his white woman and fire water. Tricks and lies, he stole America, the original owner of this nation is cooped up on a reservation so my friend it's easy to tell white man heaven black man hell he needed someone to work the land his back was too weak he needed you black man so he commissioned Sir John Hawkins to commit the world's most grievous sin to take a man who's born to be free and bring him down to slavery to sell a man as merchandise on his body put a price oh my friend it's easy to tell white man heaven is a black man hell